All right, in this video I want to talk about position, velocity, and acceleration, and just the relationship between these three. And kind of the short answer is that the derivative of position tells you about velocity. We'll give you an equation that describes velocity. If you take the derivative of an equation that describes your velocity, you'll get the acceleration. And I'll kind of digress at the end a little bit about that, but again, all that really I said again, um, so a lot of times they'll, they'll abbreviate position with s of t. So you've got some function s of t that describes your position. If you take the derivative of that function, that's going to give you the, a new function that tells you about velocity. And velocity is going to have a sign associated with it, either positive or negative. And, and again, you can think about the sign as saying, well, maybe either you're moving to the left if it's negative or to the right if it's positive, or maybe you're moving away if it's positive and kind of, you know, uh, back towards... Maybe you, leave, maybe you leave your home, and if your velocity is positive, that indicates you're moving away from home. If your velocity is negative, it indicates you're coming back. Um, to get speed, speed is always positive, so all we really have to do is just take the absolute value velocity to get our speed. Well, uh, if we calculate the instantaneous rate of change of velocity, well, when we take the derivative of velocity, that tells us about acceleration. So the derivative of velocity, which would be the second derivative of our position function, that's going to tell us about acceleration. So let's maybe do kind of one uh, mechanical problem, and then I'm, I'm just going to talk a little bit for a second why this Hopefully, why well, this makes sense. So, the displacement in meters of a particle moving in a straight line is given by the equation of motion s equals 5t cubed plus 3t plus 8, where t is measured in seconds. We want to find the velocity after 2 seconds and then the acceleration after 2 seconds as well. So, all we have to do is just take some derivatives. So, the derivative of our uh, position function, and we could even stick a t in there if we want to. Well, that's going to be the same thing as our velocity equation. Well, if we take the derivative of 5t cubed, the exponent would come down front. So we would have 5 times 3t squared. Uh, the constant just kind of comes along. The derivative of 3t is simply 3, and the derivative of positive 8 is 0. So we'll get 15t squared plus 3. Well, that means the velocity after, well, 2 seconds. All we have to do is just plug it in. So if we plug in 2, uh, we'll get 15 times 2 squared plus 3. Uh, 2 squared is 4, so we'll get 15 times 4 plus 3. 15 times 4 is 60 plus 3 will give us 63. And it was in meters and seconds. Those were our units. So it says your velocity is 63 meters per second. Okay, so nothing to do, nothing tricky, nothing crazy other than taking a derivative and plugging in t equals 2. You know, they could have asked something like, uh, when does your velocity equal 100 meters per second? So just to throw in something different, when is your velocity uh, equal to 100 meters per second? Well, in that case, you would just take your velocity equation and now we would, we're trying to figure out when our velocity is 100. We would just plug 100 in on the left side, and then you would simply have to um, solve for t. So you could subtract 3, divide by 15, take square roots, and do all that. So um, I'm not going to go through it, but that's the difference. Okay? You would just plug it in and then have to solve. Um, let's do the original other problem I did say, which was to find the acceleration. Well, again, we know our velocity here, our velocity at time t is 15t squared plus 3. If we take the derivative of velocity, that is going to give us our acceleration function. And if we take the derivative of 15t squared, well, the t squared will get 2t to the first. The derivative of positive 3 is just going to give us 0. And if we multiply 15 times 2t, Hey, we get 30t. So that says our acceleration after 2 seconds would be 30 times 2, or we would get 60 meters. And now in the denominator, we write seconds squared. Okay, so those are your units. 60 meters per second, second squared. Should that be plural? I don't know, it's plural. Uh, so... Um, 
so that's the basic idea. You're just taking derivatives of, uh, is all you're doing. And, you know, uh, so that's the short answer. If you start with position, take the derivative to get velocity. Take the derivative of velocity to get acceleration. Equivalently, if you start with position, take two derivatives to get acceleration. If you've seen antiderivatives, well, you just go backwards, you know. So if you start with acceleration, the antiderivative is, is velocity. And then the antiderivative of that is going to tell you stuff about position. And again, why does this make sense? Sense, you know. So again, a derivative. Remember, somehow a derivative, a derivative quantifies an instantaneous, quantifies an instantaneous rate of change. Well, if you're sitting in your car, right, and you're driving along, I'm going to try to draw a terrible little car. Um, Hey, that's a great car. Um, so if you're driving in your car, right, and you're 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 going down the road there, um, if you look at your speedometer, for example, you know, really that's telling you a speed uh, because it, it's it's it technically doesn't tell you a velocity when you look at your speedometer, right? Because it's not telling you the direction that you're going. It's just telling you, hey, you're going 50 miles an hour or however fast you're going. Um, it's a funny looking speedometer. So however fast you're going, it says you're going 50 miles an hour. Well, again, what does that 50 miles an hour tell you? It somehow quantifies the rate, the instantaneous rate, the rate at that instant when you look at the, the speedometer. It's telling you the rate at which your distance is changing. So again, if you have a function that tells you you know, so maybe this is time t, and this is your distance, maybe from home. Okay, so maybe your distance, maybe you're you're speeding up because you want to get the, you know, get away from home really quick for some reason. Maybe you got a hot date. Um, the idea is, if you calculate the slope of that tangent line, it's going to calculate the instantaneous rate of change, or again, it's going to tell you the slope of this line is going to tell you the velocity. So, one more time, you know, when when you know, when you were driving really fast, you don't say, oh, to your friends, you don't say, the rate at which our position was changing was really big. You say our velocity, or usually you say our speed, it was really big. Okay, we were going really fast. Our speed was really fast. The rate at which our position was changing was really quick. So um, that's the big use. Again, we talk about derivatives as being instantaneous rates of change. Um, so, depending on the situation, what does it mean to be an instantaneous rate of change? Well, again, this is kind of the useful part of calculus is, uh, uh, you know, if you start with the physical situation, usually that derivative is going to tell you something, you know, some new physical information, and sometimes you have to think about what that new physical information represents, as in this case. So, all right, so sorry for uh, kind of waxing on here at the end. Again, the short answer, just take derivatives. But again, to me, this is the useful part. I mean, this is uh, the conceptual end of it, and this is what makes it less mechanical, and this is what, um, you know, when you can, I think, grasp some of this stuff, it becomes less symbol pushing, and it becomes more useful. So, all right. Um, anyway, I hope this video helps, and if you have any comments or questions, as always, feel free to post them as comments.